got over a year and a half ago when I was fortunate enough to uh, have the opportunity to participate in the NCAA think tank on student athletes with disabilities. Ted was there. Ted's very versed on the ECAC, being a former ECAC student athlete, uh, works at an ECAC institution. The light bulb went off in his head and my head, and we started talking about it. And with the infrastructure that we have and the way that we are positioned, it was natural for us to be positioned to embrace the opportunities for student athletes with disabilities. We can add additional events to some of our existing championships, whether it's rowing, track and field, swimming and diving. Uh, we're certainly positioned to embrace a wheelchair basketball league, etc. So it's, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity, as Jeff said, a different niche for us, the way we're structured. And the ECAC brand certainly has been around a long time. These young, younger, uh, say young, they will be sort of young to me, but these student athletes with disabilities that will be able to participate will be coined as varsity athletes. And, and I think that's the significance thereof. And, and, and we're, gonna, we're walking before we can run. We have a lot of work to do moving forward. Uh, we had a wonderful uh, conference call a couple of weeks ago with Bernard Franklin, with uh, Chris Ruckdashel, and, and the NCAA is supporting us, uh, I'll say it's certainly 100%. Right, Chris, thank you. Um, and we're ready to move forward. And the other thing we need, like everybody else, is, is make sure we have the resources in place. Uh, we, we certainly have some external dollars coming in at this point. I met with some folks that were excited to support the student athlete with disabilities and in, this, in our sport inclusive model from sources that aren't positioned to support the traditional student athletes, so to speak.